Cable Bahamas has always been considered the innovator. People can have confidence in Cable Bahamas as a mobile operator because of our past history. We've proven to the Bahamian community that we are in fact able to manage additional services as a telecommunications company. Customers expect the best from Cable Bahamas. The technology that we bring is revolutionary technology because we know that the Bahamian public, they deserve it and Cable Bahamas is here to bring it to them. We are ready. Turn us on. The FNM's deputy leader says Prime Minister Barry Christie may be cracking under pressure. A man found stabbed to death inside his Long Island home. Island Lux CEO talks the expenses of running a web shop. And tourists get an instant VAT rebate for the sake of competition. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and NB12 starts right now. Free National Movement Deputy Leader Peter Turnquist said he believes the Prime Minister is beginning to crack under pressure. With next month marking the Progressive Liberal Party's third year in office, Turnquist believes the Prime Minister and his team are on a race to fulfill campaign promises. But he said things aren't looking so good. He said that same pressure has the Prime Minister lashing out in public. Kyle Joaquin reports. With all the controversy recently surrounding the Christie administration, FNM Deputy Leader Peter Turnquist believes the Prime Minister is under a lot of pressure. He said Prime Minister Christie has a lot of decisions to make. And if he doesn't make those decisions soon, he said, the Christie administration could be facing even more trouble. With one cabinet minister under police probe and the Deputy Prime Minister in hot water for misleading Parliament on the Bamsey insurance fiasco, FNM Deputy Leader Peter Turnquist believes there is a lot of pressure on the Prime Minister. In fact, Turnquist said he thinks the entire government is under pressure, which he said is starting to crack its foundation. The sad part, he said, is Christie has to make one of two choices, deal with it or step down. Unfortunately, it's not going to get any easier. Uh, the, the economic times that we're in, uh, the way the, the crime levels and, and, and all of the other social pressures uh, that exist uh, are not going to go away anytime soon. Um, certainly not under this government. And so, uh, you know, this is something that, he, that he's going to have to deal with. Uh, I believe that he has to do more in terms of uh, involving the community, involving uh, other stakeholders, and also uh, uh, delegating more responsibility. Last week, while speaking to a group of journalism students at the College of the Bahamas, Christie said to hell with journalists. Christie even went as far as to brag of his service as MP for the same constituency for eight consecutive terms. Turnquist says the Prime Minister's behavior in recent weeks is a sign that he may not be able to handle the pressure. But he said a lot of the issues before the Prime Minister demand a simple decision from him. With respect to Mr. Gray, it's clear. And you don't need you know, to wait on any investigation with respect to uh, uh, the, the obvious uh, breach uh, of, of protocol that has happened there. There must be consequences. And, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that it, it will prove an example to the rest of society. Uh, and, and I think uh, it is unfortunate that he's not taking a leadership position in respect to that. Then there's the ordeal surrounding the burnt male dorm at Bamsey and the revelation that the building was never insured despite the Deputy Prime Minister previously telling parliamentarians that the dorm had insurance, but it lapsed. There are some real issues there. Uh, and again, you know, we're kind of trying to wait it out to see if it'll go away. Uh, it will not go away. Uh, these are, are, are real issues that affect uh, the Bahamian people and the resources of the Bahamian people. Uh, and we're going to demand uh, a full transparency and accountability for it. Again, you need to just make a decision. And, and you know, once you make a decision, uh, it, it's, it's, it's done and, and you can move on. Throughout the last two years, Christie and his government have boasted of Bamsi and Bahamar. The government is relying on the new resort for the creation of thousands of jobs, but having already been delayed twice, Turnquist said it's not looking too good for the government. The FNM deputy believes the government should have never bragged of Bahamar or Bamsi, saying the two should be looked at as national achievements, not something that the government plans to push as part of Christie's legacy. It is uh, um, unfortunate uh, um, that, you know, the country's uh, progress is tied uh, to this legacy uh, um, creating kind of uh, projects um, because so far none of them 
has proven to be uh, tremendously successful, or they all have had some kind of issues. Um, you know, the delay in Bahama is a, a tremendous concern uh, to us. Um, with the new uh, opening date, I think it's May 1st or something, um, there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, and th the economic recovery uh, of the country, uh, certainly uh, New Providence, is heavily dependent upon that. Turnquist says while Bamsi is a great idea, it is being poorly executed. He has one message for the prime minister. There's nothing wrong with trying to create a legacy, but it must make sense for the Bahamian people because this is not your money. This is not your, your, your future that we're talking about. We're talking about the Bahamian people and, and generations to come. Um, and, and so, you know, putting all that legacy thing behind, if you do the right thing, then history will judge you kindly. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. A man was found stabbed to death inside his Clarence Town, Long Island home yesterday. According to police, shortly before noon, officers received reports that a man was found dead at his home. And upon arrival at the scene, they met the lifeless body of a Caucasian man with multiple stab wounds. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. A team of investigators from the Central Detective Unit is in Long Island assisting with the investigation. And a woman is in serious condition in hospital after a gunman shot her to the back at her Peter Street home. According to reports, the incident took place shortly before 9 last night. Officers say the woman was at her home when two men armed with handguns shot her before fleeing on foot. The woman was rushed to hospital where she is listed in serious condition. A man died in a boating accident this afternoon. In a statement, police said the incident occurred near West Bay Street and the vessel is now at the Police Marine Support Unit based at East Bay Street, where investigations are continuing. In other news tonight, Chairman of the Free National Movement, Michael Pintart, says it's time for government to give an update on that investigation into claims a Bahamas Electricity Corporation board member accepted bribes from a French power company to swing BC contracts its way. Between 1999 and 2001, Alstrom allegedly paid bribes totaling $325,000 to a BC board member. Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson has said she's requested information in relation to the matter and will speak to the issue at the appropriate time. But government has been quiet on what specific steps it has taken. Pintart said although the media is doing a wonderful job in challenging government to come clean on a range of issues, more pressure needs to be placed on the status of the BEC bribe investigation. I think that the media needs to constantly ask the Prime Minister to share what they know in terms of the investigation into who would have received a bribe um, um, while sitting on the board of BEC. There are far too many instances where investigations are carried out but we don't find out what the results are. The view this government uh, seemed to hold is that if they do not discuss uh, the matter, the public will simply forget. Pintart said to date there's still not a lot of clarity as to the details surrounding the investigation into that Runward Wells letter of intent controversy. He said Bahamians still don't have a conclusion on the visa scandal at the Bahamian Embassy in Haiti, which resulted in some visas being cancelled by the Bahamian government. Pintart said there have been far too many reports and investigations commissioned by this government, but yet there are no public results. He said this is just another example of the Christie administration's lack of transparency. Un unfortunately, I think Mr. Christie has a greater problem than, than simply not governing with transparency. The Christie administration lacks discipline and they're unfocused. So they seem not to have the ability to launch initiatives and follow them all the way, all the way through. They lack discipline because they are seeking to go for the low-lying fruit, that is, to create public relations exercises as opposed, as opposed to grappling with the real issues that affect people's lives. And so they are moving from issue to issue, theme to theme, and, and, and at the end of the day, we're not accomplishing what we need to, uh, which is transforming the lives of Bahamian people for the better. We've heard of the millions web shop operators are investing in hopes of obtaining licenses. But how much really goes into running the business and expanding? Well, Island Lux CEO Sebastian Bastian said keeping his company at the same level of international web shops is costing him a pretty penny. This renovation has cost us about $250,000, so we're investing quite a bit of funds into the play experience and uh, we're sending our staff to extensive training courses so that we offer the type of service Island Luck has been known to, to give its customers and 
continue to be the number one in the industry. Bastion opened the newest Island Luck location on Wednesday, the first of five Island Luck Select locations. But Bastion says that was only the beginning. There will be a total of five stores that will carry this banner. Um, that will be the Village Road Store, Prince Charles Shopping Center, Paradise Island, the Mallet Marathon, and then we're going to renovate our Southwest Plaza store, which is our biggest store, um, to this same concept. The new Island Luck location resembles a casino and is equipped with a drive through 50 computers that resemble slot machines, flat screen televisions, and a lounge area. Bastian said it's his way of ensuring his customers are able to play as comfortably as possible. Well, the name Island Luck Select because it's the premier um, version of what we already do. Um, Select will just dif differentiate these types of stores from our other stores because we're not going to outfit all of them because you know we don't want to take people out of their comfort zone as well some people still like the old conventional way of web shops and um, select just gives people uh, from the exterior um, once they see that sign and you know see that that that, um, that presentation from the exteriors they all be they are the same type of exterior this particular store is um, unique in its own way because this also introduces the first drive through uh, concept for the web shop ever introduced to the market. So, you know, patrons can, don't even have to get out of their car, they can purchase their, their numbers or make deposits to their account by just uh, going on the drive through And, you know, I think the customers will just love that because, you know, you have a lot of people that still don't want to come in a web shop, but oh, no, they love to the gamble. So, you know, we're just accommodating all, all markets, um, you know, no matter where it is. And it's Good Friday. <laughs> On this day, Christians remember the crucifixion of Jesus. Church goers flock to services around the country this morning. Members of St. Matthew's Anglican Parish pack the church today in commemoration of the somber occasion. But what's Good Friday in the Bahamas without some hot cross buns and fish? Seafood buyers cramped the Montague fish ramp today for some last minute deals on fish. Fisherman Gregory Brown says sales have been going well, but he still has a lot more fish to be sold. Right now we have the main snappers, the lane snappers, but everybody likes the fry snappers. The lane snappers also, we have the hog snapper. We have the hog snapper, what is nice for filet. We also have the Margaret fish, what, what is good fish doing. And uh, we also have uh, we also have the nice mutton snapper, but everybody likes the big hole. The most popular fish are the snappers and the goggle eyes, yeah. And also we have the nice famous Nassau grouper.